patients should have their C-spine immobilized, particularly if the injury involved a dangerous mechanism, such as a fall from a height, a motor vehicle accident, or PVA, and in the presence of an abnormal neurological signs or symptoms. Apply triple immobilization, which includes a backboard, cervical collar, and supportive blocks. The C-spine can be cleared clinically, radiologically, or both, depending on the mechanism and the clinical picture. We will mainly focus on the radiological evaluation, in particular on plain x-rays. However, one could also include flexion extension views, CT spine, and the ultimate radiographic tool to evaluate C-spine, the MRI. There are at least three views that one should request for, and that includes the AP anterior posterior view, lateral view, and the dontoid or the open mouth view. On your lateral x-ray, work through your A, B, C, Ds. A is for adequacy and alignment. Adequacy. Is the skull base of C7 T1 disc space visible? If not, you need to ask for a swimmer's view, where the patient is asked to lift their arm up, and this clears the humeral head of the cervicothoracic junction. Alignment. Look at the anterior vertebral body line, which is in yellow, the posterior vertebral body line, which is in pink, the spinal laminar line, which is in blue, and the posterior spinous line, which is in green. Posterior mild alignment is more important than anterior. Anterior subluxation is caused by facet dislocation if less than 50% of the vertebral body width. This suggests a unilateral dislocation. If it's greater than 50% of the vertebral body width, a bilateral dislocation. We'll discuss this a little bit later. Also ensure that the lines drawn through two spinous processes converge. B is for bones. Look for symmetry, trace the vertebral bodies looking for fractures. If there's asymmetry, this is likely caused by compression. If the compression is greater than 40%, there is likely a burst fracture, whilst anterior compression may be caused by a teardrop-shaped fracture. C is for cartilage. Ensure that there is equal gaps between the virtual bodies. D is for distance. The distance from the occiput to the atlas should be less than 5 mm. If increased, there is likely an atlantic occipital dissociation. S is for soft tissue. Look at the retropharyngeal or tracheal space. Remember 6 at 2 and 2 at 6. That is 6 mm at C2 and 20 mm at C6. If there's an abnormal measurement, think of soft tissue swelling. This could be from an obvious fracture or an occult fracture, hematomas or an abscess. Now looking at the AP view, look for symmetry of the virtual bodies and the alignment of the spinous processes. And now the open mouth view. Is the dense visible? Trace the bones looking for fractures and equal distance between C1 and 2 joint space. Now we'll briefly discuss the interfacet dislocation. Unilateral interfacet dislocation is due to hyperflexion and rotation, causing the inferior facet on one side to slide over the superior facet and becomes locked, causing anterior subluxation of the virtual body of less than 50%. So let's review this x-ray. C71 junction is poorly visible. There is malalignment of less than 50% suggesting a unilateral interfacet dislocation. There is hyperflexion of C4 and 5, with widening of the interspinous space. There is no obvious fr fracture or features of compression. There is increased disc space between C5 and C6, and the lanto-occipital distance appears to be normal. On AP view, there is mild alignment of the spinous processes, which can only occur due to a rotatory force. See the lateral view again, and note that the spinous processes of C3 and C4 appear short because of this rotation. On CT scan, you can look for an inverted Burger sign on axial view. Bilateral interfacet dislocation is caused by hyperflexion, causing an anterior dislocation of the virtual body of greater than 50% of virtual body width. This is associated with extensive soft tissue and cord damage, and is an unstable dislocation. As you can see from the red circle, the superior articular facet lies anteriorly compared to how it should normally lie, which is outlined in green. This occurs bilaterally. The lateral view shows that C7 and T1 space is poorly visible. There is malalignment of greater than 50% of the virtual body at C5 and C6, suggesting a bilateral interfacet dislocation. On AP view, there is no malalignment of the spinous process as there is no rotation. This x-ray is not visualized. On CT scan, you will find the inverted Burger signs bilaterally. These patients require reduction under fluoroscopy, that is serial x-rays, and one could use a Cohen's calipers to achieve this. So here's what you would expect to find on fluoroscopy. In summary, when assessing a C-spine on x-ray, always obtain an AP lateral and open mouth view, and you're particularly looking for malalignment and asymmetry. 
recognize and differentiate between a unilateral interfacet dislocation and a bilateral interfacet dislocation, as the latter is unstable and requires reduction. A big thank you to Radiology Assistant for allowing us to use their images in this video. We are not affiliated with the website, but please do check it out as they have a range of useful content there. Looking at my head.